All right, you're still on to today with John and Helen on Plus TV Africa here in Victoria Island, Lagos, Nigeria. And today, like I've said before, we're going to help you stay safe and stay alive as you move from one place to the other during this new time season. And so join us right now. Our guest is here. So to the main thrust for today, which is road safety, especially in this last phase of the Ember months. Let's welcome our guest, a very seasoned officer in road safety management and administration. He's a professional af affiliate um, and fellow of many professional bodies, too many for us to mention today on the show. He's a recipient of the Federal Road Safety Corps Outstanding Performance Award as the best sector commander 2022 that caught my attention i thought we should bring it out several other awards now for the past 28 years our guest has put as priority saving lives of road users core commander shegun ugungwemide believes that the joy that you create for others is that springboard for your own happiness several mantras i picked out this one welcome to the show very much. So, Core yeah. Commander Olusha Gungumide, Sector Commander, like you heard, FRSC, RS21 Lagos Command, is here seated with us today, and we are very happy to have him with us here. Thank you very much. Absolutely welcome, sir. Mm. I appreciate, sir. At this time of the year, uh, yeah. Yes, yes, this is the season. This is the season. And we are hoping this is game. your peak time. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I must thank you once again for shutting out so many other engagements and um, making you know time to be here with us. It was short notice. We apologize. Once again, you're welcome. Thank you. So, sir, I'm going to fire the first shot. <laughs> and uh, of course, you know that in exactly one week, yeah. in exactly one week from now, the Yuletide season will be upon us. And thereafter, the New Year holidays will follow. You know, already the traffic frenzy has started. Yeah. What should we expect this season? Would it be same of same? Or uh, does your, I mean, do traffic management authorities generally have anything special for us to ease, you know, traffic congestions, and especially in Lagos? Yes, thank you for adding that especially in lagos yes let me say good morning to nigerians and thanks for the privilege to be with you um anytime we talk about traffic and gridlocks in nigeria and uh, you happen to be in lagos mm -hmm. just like uh, one of the state governors made reference uh, we will not talk about anything so special or peculiar when we start getting towards the end of the year because it's what we have lived with mm. fast through the year or through the months mm -hmm. like uh, from inception in january we've been talking about gridlock in lagos mm -hmm. and that's how we are going to manage it till december till we you know snowball into the new year and so it's an indication that um, we have been on it and will continue to be on it but we cannot wish the fact away that um, at the end of the year is always the peak period yeah. more people come into the states yeah. more traveling will be made like you know our tradition when we are tending towards uh, christmas we start traveling out of lagos mm. But you also agree with me that it's balance. People are also coming into Lagos too. Is, is but yeah, you went to some extent. We have been on the road. <laughs> you 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 realize that you'll be so surprised that Lagos is the destination of some people mm. yeah. that's moving out of their local area, coming it's to Lagos road. to have fun. Mm. But we'll say it's tilting towards outward yes. because of the massive movement of people going um, to the north uh, east, east let me put it that way yeah, yeah. and you know they have huge number of uh, people in lagos yes. so but we we've come over the years to understand the way it runs yeah. and uh, we are always advancing in our projection and preparation like this year what is special is that um we have pre-Christmas preparation. Okay. We have the key period of the Christmas mm -hmm. pre preparation. Mm -hmm. The pro yes, post. that we have posts, mm -hmm. and the post also extend to January. Okay. 
okay. when people will be returning back to Lagos. So we we have a kind of all-encompassing preparation okay. for what. So nothing is going to meet us by surprise. Mm -hmm. And uh, the com the acting commercial, that's the uh, deputy commercial, uh, call commander, call commercial Bill, Dauda Bill, has uh, done something also unique this time around. He has been able to deploy more additional vehicles okay. along the major critical corridor. So for those that will be traveling on Lagos Ibadan Expressway, there will be something unusual. Okay. There's every probability that at every 10, 10 kilometers, you see the men stationed. But when you talk of more visibility, you know, one thing that gives comfort when you are traveling is the presence of security agencies mm -hmm. sure. that in case there's any problem, you have someone that is and available control too. to yes and control <laughs> because our fear about the new lagos ibadan expressway is lack of discipline mm -hmm. when it comes to speed control we'll come okay. to that okay, <laughs> okay so 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 we're, we're, we're coming to that yeah mm -hmm. more of your men on the road um there's the other side of the coin we'll leave that for now for okay. travelers yes it, it provides for you that safety and that um, confidence that you're not alone on the road yes. but for some others there are some other things that come along with the fact that you know there's um, a security or a safety personnel at every maybe two or three five kilometers we might get to that if we have time after the show now let's look at road use and the ethics of using the road why do we seem to find it difficult enforcing discipline on our roads I mean, especially in Lagos here, yeah, it's like people who go, who are behind the wheels, really haven't learned anything about the edicts of driving. Anytime we talk about discipline or some nations that have gotten it right, when we do comparison, um, we're always quick in picking Sweden okay. as one of the countries in the whole world that has been able to get it right because of um, when you do comparison, the rate of fatality compared to the developing countries. Mm -hmm. And we try to understand the, the way they got it. What were the things they put in place for them to be able to achieve that? And I always remember one thing. When we talk of governance mm -hmm. and enforcement, it takes two to tango. It's one thing for policies to be put in place. It's another thing for the populace to comply with those <coughs> principles of safety. Because when we talk of all this Western world that we are celebrating, we go to US, we comply. It's not because uh, <laughs> the, the laws are so <laughs> It's really yeah. not because the laws are so perfect. Yeah. You understand? It's not because the laws are different from ours, mm -hmm. but the attitude yeah. of attitude. people that are, you know, managing those laws that are complying with those laws are the ones that are that is quite different from the way we behave here mm. our traffic laws are intact is there to regulate our activities and runnings on the highway mm -hmm. but when they are not complied with i've said this thing severally policies is meant for majority enforcement is for minority that could oh. go against the infraction. That's right. But what we witness around this place yeah. is policy is for minority. <laughs> Why enforcement now becomes well, a problem? Is. Because it becomes overwhelming for the enforcement agencies because yeah. the number of people that are going against the rules are it's getting huge. more huge. by day. It's huge. It's huge and it's deliberate. Because I said you don't need to wait for a miscrance behind the steering yes. before you start looking for someone that will commit an infraction. Yeah. Mm. You'll be so surprised that that man that is well knitted, yeah. with tie, looking corporate, just a little trigger, you see a different <laughs> person in time. And th that brings us to our next point. You know, because now you've talked about attitude, and that's a huge problem. Yes. Now, um, let's look at defensive driving and yes. road rage. How do we solve this problem? Because it's, it's there every day. Yeah. Every As you day. step out. Every day. The best way to solve the problem of road rage is for you to ask yourself, if I have an encounter with a madman on the road, will I give it back to him? 
<laughs> I will keep away from him. <laughs> We've all lived with these tenets of safety. Yeah. That you should assume that all other road users are mad. Yes. <laughs> you're the only sane person. You are the only sane person when you're on the road. And mm -hmm. the world is asking you. So when you see a madman on the road, do you associate with him or you avoid him? Mm. It, any, the, the, the status of a country is determined by how chaotic okay. the traffic is. When you enter a country and you want to know how disciplined you, they are, you look at the their, first thing you look at is the traffic, traffic discipline. Ethics, yes. wow. And that's why the government of the day in Lagos, you know, over the years, yeah. you recall that the first thing they always tackle is this issue of traffic management. Okay. Even the present governor now is number one agenda mm. is on traffic management and transportation because if you're able to get that one right in a mega city like lagos definitely all other things are just by the way so for us to manage the road rage mm. it all starts from individual mm. anything that happens today i won't allow it to get to me because eventually you end up hurting yourself mm -hmm. and it could get so detrimental to the extreme I witnessed one along Uwosoki one year. The rage started from Alakbere. And by the time they get to the tip of Todd Milan Bridge, the two vehicles were assaulted. Because, because they, were they were no altercating, struggling, struggling yeah. competing. Then they both lost control. Wow. I asked I myself, imagine. what would they be thinking at that moment? Mm. Was that a reverse session? of the situation for them to take the proper decision? For them to say, let me allow this man be and let me have my way. And it, uh, okay. <laughs> now, last week in Ikoi, um, sadly, we recorded an unfortunate hit um, and run accident involving a prominent Nigerian cyclist. This is not an isolated case, you yeah. will agree. What efforts are we making, you know, um, to stand such practices so that we don't have people who are on their roads doing exercises and what have you get hit and um, killed? Anytime we have reason to mention the number of uh, road users, because at times people that are not too educated, they always limit uh, road users to the man behind the steering. It's beyond that. Mm -hmm. The pedestrian has the right to the road. The cyclist, the motorcyclist, they are all entitled to make use of the road. So ability to be able to manage the road is what we failed in doing. And it starts from our infrastructure. The facilities never made provisions for those exposed road users. And that's a major problem we have. It's not just, like you said, it's not an isolated case because we have series. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you look at the one that just affected that uh, gentleman, it's all as a result of distracted driving. Mm. One. Mm. And that's one major thing we've been and battling with. Uh, and the other one is visibility. Yes. Yeah. Driving at that early hour, are you so visible? Do you have your reflective, reflective tapes all around your bikes? Are you, control, are you, you wearing, uh, you know, reflective outfits? Yeah. And uh, are you driving in such a way that the other road user will actually see you? Is your speed appropriate? Is, you know, all yeah. those things will always come to play. But I want to believe that irrespective of the way that man must have conducted himself, the driver has a lot of blame to pick. Mm. Because if I have my way of investigating on analyzing the incident, I'm sure he was distracted. Because if he was not distracted, he would have been able to manage the other man. And so many things distract us right now. You don't, when you say so many things, you are just trying to manage the truth by saying so many things. One major thing, What's and that, that is the use of phone. Ah. Right behind the steering, <laughs> which many of us are so guilty of, we are. which has claimed so many lives and maimed so many people. Yes. And I ask myself, how is it so difficult for us to come in here this morning? I encounter yeah. more. I can count the number, countless the people you saw using their phones. using that I used to be. I have to be using my mic to okay. speak with. Okay, yeah. wow. concentrate on your driving. Wow, stop this distracting. You no, know, because you. You, you, you will see someone just hold up, people are moving, you know, slowly you, you, may, you read text, you look up, you read text, you look... And you it won't split second. Yeah, it, it doesn't take much. And you see some will even be holding it. And reading text. And be reading and be making, you know. And it has gotten so bad. Even at the sight of the Absolutely. FRS vehicle, it does okay. not even send any signal to them again. Mm. Mm. I know what we operate now is intelligence, mm. 
kind of operation. Because I must not do enforcement that will end up creating more problems. Yeah. So that's why we dwell more on advocacy. Sure. But um, too much of advocacy without enforcement it's is like just mere entertainment. Mm -hmm. That's why you see our men out there trying to do the needful. Wow. Okay. <laughs> trying to do, do the needful. It's time to take a very quick break. But don't go away. It will be a fast one because we come back to wrap up our conversation with the guest and tell you more uh, about road safety and all that you need to know. Stay with us. So thanks for staying with us. Uh, the program is today with John and Helen. It's live on Plus TV Africa. And our focus today is on road safety. The sector commander that, uh, for FRSC, Olusha Gungungbemiti, is still here with us. So let's uh, pick up from where we stopped oh, before, before the break. The break. Yeah, Helen, yeah. you go on. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, you, you mentioned something that happened. I mean, you talked about your acting boss. Recently at a sensitization effect, event in Plato State, um, the act, acting core marshal represented by uh, sector commander um, Alfonso's um, advised motorists, you know, to take a break after four hours each time you have driven for four hours you should take time to rest how practicable is that yes <coughs> and how necessary is that is um one how practicable secondly how necessary it's very necessary because um if you have been so you know peculiar or so familiar with traveling with commercial vehicles mm -hmm. You agree with me that um, most time we notice our drivers do struggle Jesus. with sleep. Mm -hmm. If you, that's what I do with the inner mirror. Mm -hmm. Anytime I'm traveling, I concentrate on the inner mirror. It shows the face of the driver, and you see them blinking. Okay, your own driver. No, yeah, not. I'm not talking of a forest. I'm talking of commercial drivers now. Yes, because that's our area of yeah, interest. Yeah, I mean, I mean, your yes, own, your, your own, own driver. Your own so driver. when you look at the inner mirror, you most see you eyes. see their faces. Uh, in the highs, they struggle, they mm, bleak to stay repeatedly to stay awake, and that's why I always encourage commuters to engage their drivers when they are on transit mm. to keep them alive. Because most time they don't sleep through the night. Yes, you see that they get involved in one conduct or the other that is not too yeah. friendly mm -hmm. with day driving so what we try to encourage is when you drive and you feel after four hours is believed that you could have been stressed up mm -hmm. with the cooperation of other members of the vehicle yeah. you should be allowed to have a nap mm -hmm. and even if you're alone you should consciously even if you are you should it should be part of our you know, rudiments Routine. when it comes to, yes, yeah. when it comes to issue of safety yeah. on our roads. Ah, it's, it's possible. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's something that we just need the cooperation of the buy-in of other road users. That If you know it's all about you, mm -hmm. it's all about your safety. Mm -hmm. I did it once when I was traveling to Abuja. We got to Abaji and I noticed this man was, you know, struggling with sleep. Mm. I just pleaded with him, Mr. Driver, can't you just take a little <laughs> take a break? And they can. As he was parking, the ma he didn't even allow me to finish. He quickly parked wow. and now moved around the vehicle. vehicle. Yeah. Coincidentally, 90% yes. of my fellow commuters <laughs> were sleeping. Mm, of course. So when the man stopped, he woke up and said, what happened? What happened? In my mind, he could have been inside a dish. Mm. Yes. And many of them wouldn't have been able to say, what happened? Yes. Yes. I mean, they just opened their eyes and made because them Because everybody wants gate. to pick up from your destination and just, just arrive you know, and quickly. Okay, get now, to now that is, that <coughs> is one very strong point, yeah. you know, which I have. Mm. And, we need, and, a, and we need hope, a few. I hope the viewers too have taken that. Okay. Can you give us a few other things? Like, what are those key things that you must as routine? Yes. You know, just give us a few of those things. Yeah, especially that you must this season. Strictly adhere to. That's if as a driver. If you are, as a driver, if you are, as, 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 as a, a passenger, commuter, okay. as, if you are traveling, maybe long distance. Okay. Safety tips. Let me let me start. I think I will have to put it in categories now yes. for the drivers. Yes. If you wake up in the morning, the first thing you should have in mind is that you are going on a trip. Be handed with the information about the route. Okay. It goes a long way. Mm -hmm. 
what is the high is the road like especially commercial drivers mm. the man that came yesterday should be able to give you an idea mm -hmm. the well, choco point like the back black spots mm. the green lock area you don't so that assume you that you don't, it's a regular you know, no 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 that you can just close your eyes and blow it mm -hmm. so you have a you are handed with that information yeah. the second one is sleep well at night mm -hmm. so that you can be prepared for the day's journey yes. and when you wake up do your normal first parade check the vehicle check is intact it. minimum safety standard is required mm. you can't proceed on a trip without side mirror yes. you can proceed on a trip without yeah, a working yeah, yeah. wiper mm -hmm. your lightning system are not working forget about day night can fall you can't predict what will happen so your lightning system must be happy and make sure you fill your tank the idea of we we remove obstructions on the highway is it not so ridiculous someone will say the fire got finished mm. and the vehicle <laughs> is abandoned on the highway yeah. so put yourself in the mindset mm. that you're on a trip Maybe and avoid have. psychological distraction mm. if you have reason to settle never you leave your home or your wife under rancor mm. okay. it goes a long way to create the way you conduct yourself on the highway mm -hmm. and if we record fatalities on nigerian roads it's not, it, it's not necessarily because there's tire bust. Mm. Even when there's tire bust and you drive under the normal condition, it might not lead to death. Mm. But it's because of excessive speed. Excessive speed. Okay. That is the major factor of fatal crashes. Mm. Because when you drive beyond the regulated speed, you, control. You, might, you lose control and the impact determines the number of people that will be alive. Imagine the one we lost about more than 60 people killed in a day mm -hmm. yeah, between that the abaji and the one that happened at meduguri just one day. one day you should know that you can imagine the impact yes. of the speed mm -hmm. yeah. you know so when you have that one overloading should be avoided mm -hmm. because even when there's a crash mm -hmm. and the the occupants are free mm, it's easier for them can. to escape yeah. most of the inferno that leads to so many deaths is because they are choked up okay. So because when you are living, when you are trying to escape under panic, mm. that yeah, big yeah. exit will become so narrow. True. Hmm. True. And the other one is always make sure, be conscious of the kind of tires you have. Yeah. If your tire is not worn out, the fact that a tire is not expired does not mean it's good or it's still usable. Because it can still be within the expiring date and it's already worn out. We need a part two. <laughs> because I have, I have loads of questions and, you know, um, we've been told that the time has mm. run out for this particular now, segment. I would want to thank you for the yes. Christmas gift that thank you've you given really? us. Yeah. Because, I mean, this advice, yes. the, the gift, gift of life, you know, at least an attempt to save our lives, is the greatest gift. And that has come from you this morning. Thank you. Thank you so, um, and I think this conversation, like she said, uh, shouldn't just be seasonal. Mm. You know, uh, I think we should have it as a regular reminder. So that's an open invitation to you, sir. Yes. That please, I'm always at your whenever, <laughs> even when we don't call you, yes. whenever you think that you may it's have some to, important yeah. message to pass okay. on mm -hmm. to road users, you know, kindly, you know, just we're just a phone call away. Or not. Right. Thank so uh, we want to thank you so much for preventing another crash. I'm sure. And uh, with this information, with this information mm -hmm. <laughs> you've given us, thank you, thank you, thank you. We can't thank you enough. Like I said, if it's possible, we'll do a part two. So please be on the standby. Oh. <laughs> and our appreciation to your colleague, um, your the who, commercial. yes, uh, the, com the, 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 the acting commercial, the acting, yes, <laughs> who gave us the link to you for this um, opportunity. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I wish you the very best as you step out of here and back to duty. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ojodu is waiting for you. He's waiting. <laughs> we are All right, then. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. So we move on from this conversation to the next segment. And the next segment is another opportunity for you probably to own that dream house. Property. M.I. Okoro and Associates have given us that opportunity. And we will be getting to hear more good news from them in just a moment and don't forget we have um, the keep fit lady waiting to take us to the gym and help us shed some of this weight especially during the season so let's invite um, dolly phillips and after that the real estate um, 
solution segment will be here with MI Okoro and Associates. Don't go away. <laughs>